the pleasure of introducing you to Fernando Gutierrez Amaros. She's currently a PhD candidate on the Grand Sasso Science Institute in L'Aquila, Italy, next to Rome, more or less. She has studied economics and political science at ITAM in Mexico and a master degree in computer science at the University of Warwick. She works on, on the proxy of regional economics, focusing her interest on labor dynamics. And today she will be, she will be explaining you this nice paper. Uh, I want also to point out that this is the first seminar organized by PhDs, and where a PhD is going to present, so it's more or less a novelty. Thank you very much. So hi everyone, I'm really happy to, to be here, thanks for the introduction. So my name is Fernanda, I studied my PhD at Gran Sasso Science Institute in Italy and currently I'm visiting the Universidad de Barcelona. I'm being hosted by Judith Val, which is also my co-author in this, in this project. So the title we are thinking on changing it, but so if you have any suggestions please shoot. So the title is the pandemic enlarge or reduce the gender gaps in health. Oh no. I guess what you tell me. I can move it from here. No worries. Or not. <laughs> Yeah, it's frozen. Does it work? The screen is frozen. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's that. Oh, that works. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. You're welcome. Oops. But anyway, um, so this is the main scheme of my presentation. And, well, um, one of the most um, prevalent empirical regularities in health economics is the male-female health survival paradox that states that women experience poor health throughout their lives uh, despite achieving longer longevity. And with, the men, with men, it's the quite, quite opposite. So we observe a similar pattern during COVID where infection rates and, and long COVID affected more women Whereas for men, they suffer for a larger uh, mortality. So given that during the pandemic, there was a, a mass, uh, healthcare was massively reduced, we were wondering if this might have affected men and women differently, given this in this context of this gender gap. So also as, as a bit of a context, uh, the policies aimed to protect the health system from collapsing during the pandemic were mostly lockdowns and in terms of health services, uh, temporary suspensions of non-urgent medical procedures and consultations in healthcare facilities. So this most likely affected preventive and treatable healthcare. So uh, in the recent uh, Nobel Prize, Claudia Bolin, in this paper with Gerard Moni, they asked if have women always lived so much longer than men. So they, they, in this paper particularly, they want to research what, what are the determinants of this female advantage that emerged in the US during the latter half of the 20th century. And they claim that they were mostly uh, caused by environmental factors. They claim that studying the timing of when this gap starts is crucial for understanding the series of factors that interplay that enhance women's life expectancy. So given this, what happened to what happened during COVID-19? So our main research questions are to what extent has the pandemic affected gender gaps in overall mortality and healthcare access and satisfaction? And as secondary questions we have which are the causes of non-COVID-19 death that the pandemic outbreak impacted the most? And what happens to gender gaps in accessibility and satisfaction? when the health system capacity is restricted. So in a nutshell, what we're going to do is, or our objective is to identify pathways of the evolution of gender gaps in health outcomes derived from COVID-19 in Spain, the first years of the pandemic, 
and we're going to use a difference in difference and an event study design. So we're going to use a detailed healthcare access data as well as administrative data on mortality. So, yes. So I'm sorry, but that, uh, I may have missed it. <laughs> so longevity is it's, it's bigger for women yeah. than for men. That's okay. So health is better for women than for men. No, it's that's the perks of the paradox now that women have poorer health status throughout their lives, but they live longer. Well, how do you measure that? So this has been measured. So we also find this, but this is like an empirical regularity. Maybe I, I should have uh, cited some papers, but this has find this is a finding that is content in industrialized countries. And it's related to the incidence of cancer or so what? I mean, so this concept of better health. Okay. How do you measure it? So it, it depends on. It's very context specific. In the case of the US, this paper that I cited of, of Claudia Goldin, they found that uh, part of, of this female advantage in the US was because women were lying, dying less in, during childbirth, but also because of uh, a decrease in infection diseases. So it's very con context driven, but it, this is an empirical regularity in industrialized countries that women tend to live longer, but they suffer of poor health. So what we are aiming to do is to see if gender gaps in general for the context of COVID. Can it be that men received more health care because they need more, according to your reasoning? I mean, if women are more healthy per se, without the need of going to the health system, then it makes sense that men have a higher health investment because they need it more, because they are more prone to be it's just that I, I think also that it's very, we're going to talk about this, of our findings, because we talk about health services. And we're going to see how women, uh, like this is a preview of, what our, of our findings, women go less after COVID. And before, we find that uh, there is this pre-trend that they used to go less, then started to, to, to attend more to health services. And with the outbreak of the pandemic, they didn't, they stopped going to, to health services. And the million dollar question is why? But there is a, a very uh, big uh, <coughs> chunk of literature with heterogeneous uh, results. The women, despite, because they have poor health, they go more to the doctor. But we also find the quite the opposite. So it depends on how you're measuring it. Yes? But is that a biological issue? Or this has something to do with relationship inside the labor market or a type of job? Or risk activities that may, may have a, a, a gender difference. Okay, so there is part of the literature that it's more on the medical side that they, they say yes. Most likely women have a very better design that they live longer. But also in this uh, liter literature that I'm using, it's more of an environmental thing, of environmental factors. So if, if for example, the Claudia body, it's more that uh, in terms of infection diseases. So it's mixed. But anyway, I will talk about uh, your specific questions uh, further on. So this is an overview of what happened to during COVID uh, in terms of healthcare access. And as you already know, COVID-19 uh, overwhelmed most of the health services around the world. And the measure that was uh, taken was to cancel non-origin medical procedures and consultations. So. This combined with also uh, an overall increase in waiting times. Uh, people stopped searching for, for health um, consultations due to fear of contagion, or they were also complying with the mobility restrictions. So all this combined could have uh, an effect on unattended uh, diseases. So this uh, Rosenbaum paper is more of a qualitative one, and they say that for example, in the US, um, several interventions whose difference between urgent and non-urgent were not that straightforward. For example, a knee, replace, a knee replacement could be like cancelled in an easy way and, and won't put at risk a person's life. A person's uh, life. But there were some that they were not that clear. Also, in, in this, uh, so this paper is more about interviews to health staff. They interviewed a chief of hematology at this hospital in the US, 
and they said that during the first week of the pandemic, they change more uh, the practice of medicine than in the 28 years that it has of practice. Also, facilities such as operating rooms um, were converted into ICU units. And for example, also part of the literature that I found is on the medical side, and they specified, for example, breast cancer. So they go disease by disease. And in the case of breast cancer, in order to tackle it, they have certain protocols, and these protocols needed to be changed completely in a matter of weeks due to the, due to the emergency. So the effect uh, was, was quite uh, persistent, and that's why we are asking ourselves, what is this effect of the, this re restriction in health services? What impact does it have in gender gaps? So also, most of the empirical evidence that we found are regarding healthcare quality indicators, such as hospitalizations, admissions to the ICU, and the samples are quite small. Normally, what I found are papers of cases of specific hospitals and what, how they tackled the first months of, of COVID-19. So one regularity that we find is that there was a reduction in hospital admissions for non-COVID-19 related causes, especially for cardiovascular and respiratory diseases and also a decrease in diagnosis. And well, in terms of health, uh, of health outcomes, gender gaps and COVID-19, there is uh, scarce literature. And the most documented collateral outcomes were are well-being and mental health, particularly for the US and the UK. And in these two papers that I cite here, they found that the gender gap regarding mental health increased for, and the effect was driven for, was more dire for women than for men. So what was the situation in Spain? I think you, you might know this better than me. But approximately the 16th of March, they canceled non-urgent medical procedures and consultations. I believe that the state of emergency was declared the 14th of March, so this was two days after. Also, non-COVID hospitalizations decreased by 16.8% in 2020 in comparison to the previous year, with higher reductions during lockdowns. Also, they found a decline of 31.1% uh, in new diagnosis in 2020 and a decrease in cancer diagnosis. And this particular uh, fact will mirror our results and I will show you in a bit. Also, they find uh, reductions in admissions related to respiratory and circulatory diseases and a very substantial increase of telemedicine of non-face-to-face -face visits of 267%. So this is quite big but it still was not enough to cover the demand for medical consultations during the first month of the emergency. So our contributions are that we are, con we are studying uh, health gender gaps during the pandemic. We are analyzing a longer time horizon uh, with national level samples because most of the literature that we found was the first, um, the first wave or at least the first lockdown. And we are more or less um, encompassing two, three year, the first two, three years of the pandemic. And also, uh, to the best of our knowledge, we are the best, the, the first ones in assessing the accessibility and satisfaction component of health services with a gender perspective. So as a health outcome, we're going to analyze mortality. And what was the current state of, of mortality in Spain before COVID? So it was forecasted that by 2014, Spain was going to be in this group with Japan, Singapore, and Switzerland, whose uh, life expectancy will range around 85 years. And between 2001 and 2019, the mortality rates decreased for all age groups. <laughs> However, this trend reversed during 2020, and the outbreak of the pandemic caused that mortality increase for all, uh, for all years, except for the one below 20 years. And we also find this in our results. We segment our, our sample from zero to 70 years, and we couldn't find any statistically significant results. So this is uh, an overview of the absolute number of deaths. So it's from 2016 to 2021. So what you can see here, it's the uh, main causes of death in Spain, which are tumors and vascular diseases. And you can see that the yellow chunk corresponds to COVID or COVID-related uh, causes of death. So 
apparently, as, as you can see, the, the other causes, as well as tumors and vascular, seem quite uh, stable. But as you know, these absolute numbers tend to hide compositional effects. So when I do this, a uh, quite similar plot for the percentage of, of non-COVID-19 causes of death, and I put tumor vascular and I aggregated the other uh, diseases, we can see a, an increase for tumor and vascular for women in the years of the pandemic. So this is suggesting that this area needs to be researched on. So the way we're going to proceed is we want to know the COVID-19 effect on health gender gaps and we're go going to analyze two components, health services and health outcomes. And regarding health services, we're going to analyze two specific uh, aspects, which is satisfaction and accessibility. So all um, this data we obtained from Barometro Sanitario, and I'm going to explain what it is in a bit. But it's basically a survey, and we're going to use to analyze the satisfaction component this following question. That is, on a scale from 0 to 10, how satisfied are you with the Spanish health services? In terms of accessibility, we're going to analyze this question, that is, have you visited the doctor in the last 12 months? So this question is asked retrospectively as well. And uh, in the case of health outcomes, we're going to analyze uh, this data set of death certificates. So we're going to emphasize in as a health outcome in mortality rates, and we're going to analyze 11 non-COVID-19 related mortality causes. And I'm going to explain why 11, because it might sound random. But anyway, so health services, accessibility and satisfaction, we're going to use Barometro Sanitario, which is a representative survey applied at, uh, to adults residents in Spain to ask them what are their experiences with health services. Uh, it's collected annually throughout three waves, and every wave is uh, representative of the population. The only caveat of, of, this, of using this uh, data set is that for the years 2020 and 2021, the survey could not be gathered due to the emergency. So in our event study design, we'll follow the following time frame that you see in the screen. So we have three waves, uh, well, uh, we have a pre-event window that will consist in three waves of 2018 plus two waves of 2019. And as a reference period, uh, we will use uh, the third wave of 2019 that was gathered in October 2019. And then uh, the after event will be 2022, the three waves, and the first wave of 2023, which is the uh, one that was uh, the more recent data that we found when we carry on on this, um, on this research. So as I explained to you before, we're going to analyze the effect of the pandemic in two outcomes, that is access and satisfaction, with these two questions that I explained before. So why? the outcome uh, with J index of each province in Spain, and it will um, encompass this time frame that I explained before. So we will also have a women dummy variable, so beta zero will uh, capture the coefficient for women, and then we will have the coefficient beta k, that is part of our, our event study, it will be the most uh, relevant result. So if the coefficient beta k is positive, this means that uh, we are observing an increase in the, in the gender gap. If it's negative, it's a, it's a decrease. We don't expect to find any pretrends, uh, any um, yeah, statistically significant pretrends before COVID. And um, yeah, we're going to use also wave fixed effects and province uh, level fixed effects. Um, we're going to cluster the, at the province level the standard errors. And also, if you will look at this carefully, this is a difference in difference design with leads and lags. So I'm also going to estimate the difference in difference um, design, but with only a before and after COVID as a time variable, because I want to see the aggregates, um, aggregate values. So this is basically what I'm going to do in the case for accessibility and satisfaction that we use the Barometro Sanitario uh, survey. So now for the mortality outcomes, which are the health outcomes, we're going to use this data 
or provided by the National Institute of Statistics that they are their certificates. And this data set is quite rich. So it basically it's all uh, Spain's death certificates from 2018 to 2021. And it has the main cause of death, the sex, the age. Um, now they also are including occupation, but we have a lot of missing values, so that's why we didn't include it. But it's a uh, very rich uh, data set, so we collapse it on a province level by gender and by sex, yes? Have you tested if your samples are homogeneous? I mean, not necessarily. The sample in the after event has to be similar to the one in the pre-event window. Maybe in the after event you have more older people for whatever reason. Yeah. And this may be one of the, if you control for this or not. For more heterogeneous samples in the case, is the sample there? Yes, I will okay. go, it's two slides okay. from this, so bear with me. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, it's a, a very rich data set, and what we did is that we grouped and classified different causes of death, excluding the ones related to COVID-19. And we use also population camps uh, provided by INE and build mortality rates per 100,000 inhabitants. Also, bear in mind that for this event study, that timeline, the time frame of analysis will be a bit different. So, it's the one that you see on the screen. Zero will be the, our reference period, that in this case will be February 2020, a month before the declaration of emergency. So we're including minus 22 months before the outbreak of the pandemic will be, that will be April 2018 <coughs> and 22 months after uh, the outbreak of the pandemic, so until December 2021. So this will have a following uh, um, timeline than the previous um, empirical exercise. So as I mentioned, we're going to anal analyze 11 causes of mortality. So we have, uh, we did a non-exhaustive classification. We grouped 66 causes of mortality out of 102 that uh, are the main causes contained in the, in the data set. And this classification uh, encompasses the majority of causes of death. It's almost 84% of our sample. And it's, uh, so the categories are the ones that you can see in the screen, accidents, digestive, homicides, and we're also including the two main causes of death in Spain, which are tumors and vascular diseases. This is an example. So these are all the tumors. There are approximately 33 types. And all of them were grouped in a single category that is tumors. So we, we proceed in the same manner with the rest of, of the process of that. So this is your question. We divided our sample into age spe specific mortality patterns. So we did 0 to 17 that we will call it age group 1. For age group 1, as I mentioned before, we don't find any statistical significant results. 18 to 64, age group three, uh, 2, and above 65 years old, that it will be age group 3. So group 2 is a uh, working age population, and is characterized by relatively low mortality rates before COVID, at least. And the group 3 has become uh, bigger and bigger every year. Now it's 19% of population, Spain's population. And it's also characterized by containing a lot of women. So this uh, group is quite yeah, populated by women and also Spain has one of the highest life expectancy for women. And this is also what we were talking about at the beginning. No? Women tend to, be, to live longer than men. So these are more or less uh, overall the characteristics of these age groups. So if in the case for, for mortality outcomes, we will proceed in a very similar manner. So in this case, outcome variable is the province level mortality rate of the cause of that I at the time T and province J. We're going to also use a, a women dummy variable. And in also beta K, if it's positive, it's an increase in the gender gap. And if it's negative, it's a, a decrease. So it has the same interpretation. We also don't expect to have uh, pretrends because according to literature before COVID, uh, mortality rates were quite stable, so we expect not to find, and we didn't. Uh, we are also going to use time fixed effects, promise, promise level fixed effects, and it's the same uh, thing now. We're going to do a very similar estimation, but only with that before and after COVID, as a difference in difference, uh, this interaction term. So, 
what are our results in terms of health services. So in terms of accessibility, that is, that is this question about how often or did you go to the doctor in the last 12 months. We find that on average, visited 8% lesser doctors than men after the outbreak of the pandemic. This result comes from the difference in difference design. This is the event study, and you can see that we have indeed pre-trends. So women start going more to the, to the doctor, like the effect was, was zero, but then we have the outbreak of the pandemic and the gap decreased. So women, uh, in comparison to men, were going less to the doctor. And it's important for me to, to remind you that the first period that you can observe here is March 2022. This question was asked retrospectively, so it could be from March 2021 to March 2022. And the last period will be the first uh, wave, that is March 2023. So almost two years after the outbreak of the pandemic, there is no signs of recovery for women uh, attending, um, going to visit their doctors again. So this is in terms of accessibility. In terms of, uh, of satisfaction, we find that on average, satisfaction with her services decreased for by 1.7% for women with respect to men after the outbreak of the pandemic. This also comes from our difference in difference interaction term. And as you can see in the event study, we don't have pretrends. However, first period is also a decline. You know? like women are less satisfied with the health services. Only for the first period, and then we see signs of recovery. It is a shame that we don't have the years 2020 or 2021 because we really don't know if this trend the, of the first period was prevalent during those two years that we're missing data. So now regarding health outcomes, we are going to analyze the mortality rates. And a first exercise, so I group all the 11 non-COVID-19 related causes of death all together, all age groups that I mentioned before, and we observe an increase in the mortality uh, rate gender gap during April 2020. That is the first one, the second period that you can see on the screen. And this overlaps with the month with the highest number of deaths from COVID-19. So we want to elucidate uh, to disentangle this, this effect, you know? So the next thing that we did is to group the 11 non-COVID-19 related causes of mortality into two age groups, which is group number two from 18 to 64 and group number three that is 65 plus. So as you can observe um, the age group two, we can see an increase of the mortality gender gap during the first months of the pandemic. Um, it's, I think this is the first wave indeed. So it's April and June where we see this increase for the age group two. But for age group three, the effect was way worse. It was more prevalent during time. It was at least the first, um, the first lockdown, the first wave of COVID-19. And then we also find in two months in 2021. So it was quite pervasive for this age group. Excuse me. In, in this analysis of mortality, mm -hmm. there is also the COVID-19 cause of mortality, no. no. So it's all other causes, yeah. or other 11 causes of Yeah, okay. so in this, uh, this grouping of, of mortality causes, and we're also excluding... But we know that COVID-19 is more lethal for men than for women. Yes. Right, okay. So we can think that, unfortunately, some men are deaf previously from COVID than for another causes of death, just because they contract COVID more frequently, more probably, with respect to women. Okay, but here we're not accounting for... Uh, yeah, but the effect of men that have COVID before, ah, the natural, okay. natural cause of death may impact this analysis. It's a question. Okay, so the way that INE categorizes death, it's main cause of death, or related to COVID-19 cause of death. So if that person had I don't know, cancer, and it was in a very late stage, and in the hospital, it catch COVID and died from COVID, then in the data set will say that it, COVID, it COVID okay. because that was the main cause of death. We also, so this data set, I think uh, it doesn't include other comorbidities, like if they were sick before, but it's the main cause of death, and those, we're excluding them from, from here. 
So, yeah, no, you're, you're very welcome. Um, so we want to see what were the causes of death that, caused, that uh, are linked to this uh, increase in the, in the gender gaps. So now I'm going to analyze them um, per age group. And I'm going to, I'm only going to refer to the ones that we observe an increase in the, in the gap. So accidents for age group two, which is 18 to 64, we observe an increase on them, in them for age group two in April 2020. So our hunch here is that it was the month with more, that the health services were quite overwhelmed and maybe people in isolation couldn't ask for help, or maybe they did ask for help and they didn't arrive on time. And when I checked this category of accidents, where, which were the ones that increased the most, they were accidental falls. So, yeah. Just a recommendation. Yeah. If you use first differences, this noise that you have with the trends, like it seems that at some periods, people are more likely to die or less likely. If you take first differences and regress, First differences, you will clean that, clean that okay. and you will, because you can see that at some points before you have positive effects and negative effects, and the other so you have the same. Yeah. So you will clean this this noise. Okay. If you take first difference. No, we we'll, we'll try to do so to see if, if it's a bit cleaner. Okay. Thanks. Also, we observed an uh, increase in the gap for respiratory diseases. Um, particularly in April, July, September, December 2020, March, April, August, October, November 2021. So what we think that happened here is that the same infrastructure that was used to tackle COVID was used specifically for COVID cases and not for the other respiratory uh, diseases. So also we know from the evidence that we found that when it was about respiratory diseases, the protocol was quite cumbersome because they need to test first if the person had COVID, and in the case it was uh, negative, then they were canalized to another instance. So we observed this increase in respiratory diseases. And then for tumors, we observed an increase in June 2020. And then I was curious to see which were the tumors specifically that, um, that changed from one year to another, uh, the rate of change. And for women, so maybe this is not the best way to represent it, I remind you that there are 33 uh, different types of tumors and the ones that uh, increase the most, like the rate of change between 2019, 2020 and 2020, 2021 were lung cancer and breast cancer. And these two types of, of tumors rely heavily on uh, of screenings, so primary he uh, preventive health care. But in this case, the gap we saw the increase was in June. So we, we, we don't know for, for sure, but most likely there were, maybe they missed some chemo or some kind of, of treatment that affected this, uh, this specific type of, of tumors. So for men, we did the same for men, and we observed an increase in lung, prostate, and malignant tumors of ill-defined secondary and unspecified sites. So this basically means that there were tumors located in several places in the body, so metastasis. And we also have uh, the same theory, that most likely it was because of the lack of, of access to, to healthcare. Or it could be due to that, but we are not, not certain. Also, you can observe that there is more variability in comparison with men in comparison to, to women in the rate changes of, of the types of tumors. Now, for age group three, that is 65 plus, we, f we observe an increment in the labs also for respiratory diseases, uh, for from March to June, September 2020, April, July, and September 2021, which we also believe that it's uh, during several waves of, of COVID-19, at least the first, second, and I believe it's the fourth one, and um, worse as well, and increasing tumors, but in comparison to the previous age group, this was more persistent. So it was June, November, and February 2021. So this can give us a hint that it was preventive. Um, it, this could be a story of preventive healthcare, no? if we are observing an increase in this mortality gap in February 2021. So we proceed in the same manner, and we check which was uh, the rate that changed the most for uh, tumors for women. 
and in this case it was more or less the same, uh, lung, breast and meningue tumors. And for men it was prostate, lung and malignant tumors of ill-defined secondary or specified sites. So it's more or less the same. The only difference is that they changed the ranking. Now it's prostate, then lung, and before in each group two was first uh, lung and then prostate tumors. So also we observe uh, for this age group an increase in the vascular diseases in June and November 2021, so way after. So this is an, an overview of what I presented to you. Age group two, we saw uh, we observed an increase in the gap for accidents respiratory and tumors, but we observe a, a decrease in the gap for endocrine, nutritional, and metabolic, so you can find uh, diseases like diabetes here, and for suicides. For age group 3, we observe an increase in the gap for most of the months in respiratory diseases, tumors, and vascular, but a decrease in the gap for digestive. So normally what we have been asked about health services is what you asked me at the beginning, that why women go less to the to health services, and that's honestly a million dollar qu question. A way to find a possible mechanism is using barometer sanitaria, that survey. But we didn't have uh, data from 2020 and 2021, so we don't know what happened there. So there is this term in health economics called unmet needs that they talk about if so you needed to go to the doctor, but you couldn't. So why you couldn't go? And there are certain certain causes. And in Barometro Sanitario, that question was not asked in 2018 and 2019. From, from 2022 onwards, it was asked. So we can see that this has been also worrying in terms of policy. So in the case for uh, this question for 2022, reasons for the impossibility of consulting public health general practitioner, we see that men and women answer in a very similar way. So the first, uh, the first cause was a delay in the appointment. So they asked for an appointment, but they couldn't receive it uh, on time. So that was like the first cause that men and women uh, mentioned. Also the inability to contact, so they called and nobody answered. That was uh, also 30% approximately. And the other was, so I assume that uh, my health center, it's packed, it's saturated. So why bother in going? That was also one of the most common ones. And the one of fear of COVID, I was expecting that it would be less in 2022, and in fact it did, but still it would be interesting to know if people didn't attend, uh, they didn't consult health services due to fear, to contagion, but we are not able to know this. <coughs> if you have any source or any kind of material that can help us solve this uh, mystery, at least in Spain, uh, please uh, shoot. So, in conclusion, before the pandemic, women were visiting the doctor, but it's currently worse. We find a reduction on overall satisfaction with health services. We also observe a widening of the gender uh, mortality gap right after the onset of the pandemic in April 2020. We observe also changes in the age group gaps from 18 to 64 years old that can be that are driven by an increase in accidents, respiratory diseases, and tumors. For the age group 65 years old and above, we observe an increase in the gap that can be explained mostly by tumors, respiratory, and vascular diseases. So as I, we believe that our paper has uh, relevant policy implications. So we are detecting impacts on the gender gaps in mortality. So the expected effects on disease incidents are go going to be relevant to the study in terms of policy. We also consider that policies should be should target uh, the age groups that were affected the most, particularly age group 3, that is 65 plus. And we also think that policymakers need to see and to try to incentivize women to go to health care services and as again, and also to know why are they don't going or why are they not attending. So thank you very much for your attention. Please feel free to comment or give feedback.
the, your results depending on the different distribution by gender of the age groups. I mean, uh, there are more women than men of, uh, of 65 plus, which uh, basically concentrates the visits to the doctor. I don't know exactly the distribution, but uh, just from my personal experience, taking my mom to the hospital, we tend to see a lot of you know, women and older people. So um, the results depend in terms of, of quantities of people. And as he pointed, which I think is an extremely interesting comment before, um, if the number of the older people changes because of the COVID, the results mm -hmm. will be affected. And I don't know exactly how you control that. Okay, so we use mortality rates, and we use this, uh, so we estimated mortality rates by gender as well, and by age group. So, and also we use the email population comes, like we, we were aware that population will might as well change a lot in 2020 and 2021. So email has uh, the annual um, counts. They have, I believe, in January, July, and then August onwards. So we use that in order to, well, like we were aware of that in order to control as much as possible for these population changes during 2020 and 2021. But, uh, but yeah, this is a, a true concern, but this is, I think, what we were able to, to do to control it, given the data that we had. Yes? So you are talking about two dimensions, age and gender, but there's also a third dimension which is relevant, which is relationship with the chronic activity, for instance. What the activity rate of type of, 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 of employment, type of occupation, so that also may help to explain differences in increases to the to the health system. Yes, and in principle, the data set contains occupation, but it has 90% of missing values. So it, it is a it is a shame because our first approach was was to see that part, no, like what kind of of so it's women and dying, but which kind of women, which kind of men, but we're not able to to know that with this lack of, of data. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank you.